Welcome to episode 255 of Clarity Compressed. Today, we're going to talk about a gigantic bucket dumpster load of clarity that got dumped on my head from a single Instagram post. It's worth it. Trust me. <laughs> Let the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. Hey, we're in 20... 23, we're rolling heavy. First, second week, we're really doing our thing. It feels good, actually. 2023 so far, it feels like a winner to me. I don't know about you, but uh, hey, no one ever knows what's going to happen, which um, is kind of why I'm going to talk about perspective, which you know, I use the word clarity and perspective interchangeable. And a post from Joe Rogan, actually a repost from Joe Rogan from the Instagram account Inside History. Many of you may have seen it, but a lot of you probably haven't. And this gave just such a brilliantly laid out account of the last hundred years of history and put the world we're living in today in perspective for me, for so many other people that read it, so much so that I felt like I needed to share it with you um, because, hey, this is the Clarity Compressed Podcast. So we're going to try to give you a dumpster load of clarity, a swimming pool full of clarity, whatever you want to call it in just a few minutes here. So I'm going to read this and then uh, I'm going to comment on it a little bit. So uh, bear with me as I read it. I think you'll find it incredibly interesting. Here goes the post. For a small amount of perspective at the moment, imagine you were born in 1900. When you are 14, World War I starts and ends on your 18th birthday. So basically your teenage years are a full war. I stopped reading. I gave you commentary there. I'll just keep reading it. Uh, 22 million people died in that war. Later that year, the Spanish flu epidemic hits the planet and runs until you are 20. So we went right from World War I into the Spanish flu epidemic. 50 million people die from those two years. Yes, million, 52 million. When you're 29, the Great Depression begins. Unemployment hits 25%. The global GDP drops 27%, and this goes on until you're 33. The country nearly collapses along with the world economy, and when you turn 39, World War II begins. You aren't even over the hill yet. And when you're 41, the United States is fully pulled in to World War II. So right near my age, I'm 43. So between your 39th and your 45th birthday, 75 million people perish in war, and the Holocaust kills 12 million. At 52 years old, the Korean War starts and five more million people perish. At 64, the Vietnam War begins and it doesn't end for many years. Four million people die in that conflict. Approaching your 62nd birthday, you have the Cuban Missile Crisis, a tipping point in the Cold War. Life on our planet, as we know it, could well have ended, but great leaders prevented that from happening. As you turn 75, the Vietnam War finally ends. Think of everyone on the planet born in 1900. How do you survive all of that? A kid in 1985 didn't think their 85-year-old grandparents understood how hard school was. Yet those grandparents, and now great-grandparents, survived through everything listed above. This post goes on to say, perspective is an amazing art. Let's try to keep things in perspective, be smart, help each other out, and we will get through all of this in the history of the world. There has never been a storm that lasted. I thought as a 43-year-old, right, and that was only halfway through the list of things he talked about, I thought I feel like I'm a person that has some perspective. But reading that, it's no wonder they called that the greatest generation. I can't imagine going through all of those things, but that was just regular life. And all of the things that have come out of all of those situations, I mean, even just look at the Spanish flu, right? We just went through a pandemic. 50 million people died. 50 million people died from that. And think of the wars. And we're not talking, you know, some of the wars that we've experienced here in the last 20 years where it's largely been a distant war. Nothing's even come close to U.S. shores. It's been, they've been wars of a lot of, you know, missiles and foreign conflicts and, you know, a lot of people on the ground, but not even close to the number of people that were on the ground. And there was no uh, draft or conscription and we weren't sending our teenagers over to fight uh, in a mandatory way. Just millions and millions of people, conflict, 25% unemployment. To just think that we made it through all of that and we still landed in the world that we have today. 
we were still able to grow the economy. We were still able to build on in innovation and technology and and you know even medical care and you know just social you know like civil engineering and cleanliness and convenience let's just talk about the conveniences think about the conveniences we have now we were able to build and develop all of those conveniences so that you can actually watch me here on your phone or your device or listen to me in your airpods just at the press of a button all of that was able to still come out and come through that entire list of things that I just read. And it's still tempting to think about how hard we have it. And again, I'm 43. I'm in the middle of the list. I should have more perspective and not think about, man, things are hard. Things are getting bad. Things are crazy these days. Stuff that I say, stuff that I've said, stuff that I hear other people say all the time, right? Things are crazy. I don't know what's going to happen. Can't go on much longer like this. I have a feeling that there were a lot of people in those days, all throughout those days, that were feeling and thinking and the exact same things, except they had somebody kicking in their door. Now, granted, I'm not trying to minimize any of the problems we have these days. We have some complicated problems. I would argue the complexity of our challenges these days have increased with digitization, with social media, with uh, an environment when people can kind of like drop the, the propriety and decorum of having an actual one-on-one -on -one conversation and just let things fly on social media or Twitter, right? Not saying we don't have complicated issues. They are, in a lot of ways, more complex. But the thing that stays the same through it all is the fact that things aren't worse these days. Things have always been challenging. There have always been obstacles to overcome. And the phrase that says, you know, good times create soft people. Soft people create bad times. Bad times create strong people, right? It kind of goes through that progression. It, it, it's pretty easy to think that like pre-pandemic, we have gone through a large period of time, especially considering that excerpt that I just read. We've gone through a large period, a long period of time without any truly broad spread hard times. Do you think that maybe, do you think that maybe it's created a little bit of some soft people, some soft mentality, some, you know, ease of communicating and complaining about things not being easy or not being to our standard or not being to our preference, right? Oh, I don't like what you said. It made it hurt my feelings. So my life is hard. I think we need to recalibrate around that. That excerpt helped me recalibrate on those times when I say those things myself. And the truth is this. It's not harder than it used to be. Actually, it may be just the opposite. And when you look at it through the perspective and lens and narrative of American history in the last hundred years, guess what? Ooh, it's a different story. And when you go and you start spreading that through a lot of different individual people and groups and things like that, it, it could even change the story that much more. The reason I wanted to share that with you is because it was eye-opening to me. It gave me perspective. It showed me where I was on the map in that way. And hopefully, I hope so, that spurs some really good perspective that helps me make positive change, that helps me, you know, help my brothers and sisters around me move in a direction that says we can do this. Not only can we do it, but we can improve upon it. And along the entire way, we can be empathetic and care and think about how other people are doing. Think of how can we serve other people while we're doing it and just take some of those excuses that we like to throw up in our head, like throw up or throw out there. You know, maybe, maybe it is more like throw up. Things are hard. Feel bad for me. It was easier in another time. Nobody understands my challenges. And just get that thinking out of our head because frankly, it doesn't help anybody. And most importantly, it doesn't help the person saying it. So there you go. I wanted to share that when I read it. I could not wait to share it with you because of that. And uh, so, as usual, I just want to thank you so much for being here with me on this podcast, 255 episodes, however long you've been here. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'm looking forward to 2023, bringing you uh, more quick doses as much as I can, as often as I can, and uh, hopefully you back into some of the other content I'm doing on my Instagram or my LinkedIn. Please follow me on LinkedIn, Paul J. Daly, for you professionals out there. A lot of fun conversation happening. And as always, I will see you next week.